This is the Parliament Building in London, England. And before I tell you about its history, and before we take a look inside, here's my summary of a great Parliament Building tour that we took. So we just finished the tour of the Houses of Parliament, which is also known as the Palace of Westminster. I thought the tour for some reason was gonna be 45 minutes, but it was actually an hour and 45 minutes. But it was a great tour, highly recommended. Um, they have it every Saturday because the Parliament is not in sessions on Saturday. And that's the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Uh, get your tickets in advance before you come here. And there were a few things I thought were really interesting. Uh, one is the House of Commons was totally bombed out in World War II. And Winston Churchill uh, had it rebuilt, but he kept a small part of it where you can see the damage from the bombing. He just want to remind people of the horrors of World War II. The other thing that I thought was really fascinating was that the Prime Minister is not allowed in certain parts of the Parliament building. And get this, the Queen of England is not allowed in certain parts of the Parliament building. So can you imagine the Queen wants to like see a different part and and a, a security guard comes up to her, excuse me ma'am, but you're not allowed in there. So a security guard might have more power than the Queen of England inside the House of Parliament. <laughs> now some Parliament building history and then a look inside. The Parliament building, also known as the Palace of Westminster, serves as the meeting place of the two houses of the Parliament of the United Kingdom. The first is the House of Commons, which approves new laws and taxes, holds the government accountable, and debates the issues of the day. It has 640 members of Parliament, or MPs, who are elected by the people. The second house is the House of Lords, which has about 800 members, appointed because of their distinguished careers or because they have made an important contribution to British life. Its role is largely formal, it approves laws, appoints life peers, and announces the government's plans for the year ahead at the state opening ceremony. This building is commonly known as the Houses of Parliament after its occupants. The name the Palace of Westminster comes from the nearby Westminster Abbey, and it may refer to either of two structures. The Old Palace, a medieval building complex destroyed by fire in 1834, or its replacement, the New Palace, that stands today. The first royal palace constructed on the site dated from the 11th century, and Westminster became the primary residence of the kings of England until fire destroyed much of the complex in 1512. After that, it served as the home of the Parliament of England, which had met there since the 13th century, and also as the seat of the Royal Courts of Justice. In 1834, an even greater fire ravaged the heavily rebuilt Houses of Parliament, and only a few medieval structures survived. The fire of 1834 was started when two workmen in the House of Lords threw a number of tally sticks, pieces of wood used for tax collection, into a furnace under the House of Lords chamber. The paneling above caught fire, and most of the Palace of Westminster was destroyed. Architect Charles Barry won a competition to rebuild the Parliament building with a design in the Gothic Revival style, specifically inspired by the English Perpendicular Gothic style of the 14th to 16th centuries. The remains of the Old Palace, except the detached Jewel Tower, were incorporated into its much larger replacement, which contains over 1,100 rooms, organized symmetrically around two series of courtyards, and which has a floor area of over a million square feet. Augustus Pugin, a leading authority on Gothic architecture and style, assisted Barry in designing the interior of the palace. Construction started in 1840 and lasted for 30 years, suffering delays and cost overruns, as well as the death of both leading architects. The House of Lords Chamber was ready by 1847 and the House of Commons Chamber by 1852. Work on the interior continued on and off well into the 20th century. Extensive repairs followed World War II, including the reconstruction of the Commons Chamber following its bombing in 1941. The Elizabeth Tower, which is often referred to by the name of its main bell, Big Ben, has become an iconic landmark of London and of the United Kingdom. Westminster Hall is the oldest building here. It survived the fire of 1834 and fires from World War II bombs in 1941. It was first built around 1100 and the lower walls date from then. Richard II remodeled the hall in the 14th century and most of the visible stonework dates from the 19th century. Work on the hammer beam timber roof started in 1393. It's the largest hammer beam roof in the world and the largest medieval unsupported roof in Northern Europe. No pillars were needed because of the way it was designed. 
A new steel structure was used in the early 20th century to provide support, and less than 10% of the timber was replaced. 26 carved angels form the lower part of the timber frame and bear the royal arms of the time. Over the centuries, this hall has been used for state ceremonies, including the lying in state of monarchs, royal councils, coronation feasts, and law courts. In fact, one famous early trial here was that of William Wallace, who led Scottish resistance to English King Edward I in the 1290s. He was portrayed by Mel Gibson in the movie Braveheart. St. Stephen's Hall stands on the site of the Royal Chapel of St. Stephen's, where the House of Commons sat from the mid-16th century until the chapel was destroyed by the fire of 1834. The hall's ten stained windows shows the coats of arms of cities and boroughs. The statues were installed in the 19th century, and the murals were painted and the mosaics were installed in the 1920s. So as you can see, or not see, Filming is prohibited everywhere inside the Houses of Parliament building, and photography is only allowed in Westminster Hall and St. Stephen's Hall. Having said that, we did get to see the House of Commons, the House of Lords, the Members' Lobby, the Peers' Lobby, and the elegant Prince's Chamber, Royal Gallery, and Robing Room. If you do make it to London in the future, this is a tour you should not miss.